One thing is clear in this year of 1968, I believe in this country as I traveled across, and that is that the American people want no more Vietnam. What the new politics is and what it must be and what must be recognized in this country, in the last analysis, is a reaffirmation of the best within our great political traditions. Compassion for those who suffer, determination to right our wrongs within our nation, and a willingness to think, and as Abraham Lincoln said, to think and act anew, free from old concepts and false illusions. That is the kind of politics, that is the kind of leadership the American people, I believe, want this year. And that is the kind of leadership that I believe they're going to receive. Thank you very much. Bobby Kennedy is my only hero. But what you see in the 1968 campaign uh, of Robert F. Kennedy is a politician with the power to bring people together in a way that we have never seen since. There is this whole iconography of the politics of, of harmony, the politics of justice, the politics of peace. I run to seek new policies, policies to end the bloodshed in Vietnam and in our cities, policies to close the gaps that now exist between black and white, between rich and poor, between young and old, in this country and around the rest of the world. Bobby Kennedy exemplifies what a Catholic should be in public life. I run for the presidency because I want the Democratic Party and the United States of America to stand for hope instead of despair, for reconciliation of men instead of the growing risk of world war. He said, I run for the presidency because I want the United States to stand for the reconciliation of men. And that word, reconciliation, you know, in a certain sense, if you were to say that Jesus Christ had one ministry, it is the ministry of reconciliation. To consciously see his own life and work as in some way participating in that work of reconciliation, uh, that is a powerful witness by a, a Christian, a Catholic politician. There is Bobby Kennedy before November 22, 1963, and there's Bobby Kennedy after November 22nd, 1963. It was a, a profoundly painful, devastating moment in his life when he lost his brother. But he was somehow, by the grace of God, able to, to find a way to use that pain and that suffering for good. I think like a lot of us, when we are faced with a tragedy, started to ask himself basic questions. I mean, what is the purpose of life? Why is there suffering? That's really a journey spiritually for Bobby Kennedy from Good Friday to Easter Sunday. I have some very sad news for all of you, and I think uh, sad news for all of our fellow citizens and people who love peace all over the world. And that is that Martin Luther King was shot and was killed tonight in Memphis, Tennessee. It fell to Robert Kennedy to tell this community that Dr. King had been killed. And then in the next seven or eight minutes, he gave probably one of the greatest extemporaneous orations in the history of American politics. In this difficult day, in this difficult time for the United States, it's perhaps well to ask what kind of a nation we are and what direction we want to move in. You can be filled with bitterness and with hatred and a desire for revenge. We can move in that direction as a country in greater polarization, or we can make an effort, as Martin Luther King did, to understand and to comprehend and love. My favorite poem, my, my favorite poet was Aeschylus. He once wrote, even in our sleep, pain which cannot forget falls drop by drop upon the heart until in our own day despair against our will comes wisdom through the awful grace of God. He identified with that quotation because 
it, it probably came as close as language can to describing the crucible of his own grief, to describing the process that he himself had gone through in mourning the loss of President Kennedy. Through the awful grace of God, he was led out of that. And he was led out of that in a way that that night of his sorrow then became a new dawn. And his wounded heart became the heart of a wounded healer. It was, in the end, life-giving. It was a kind of uh, resurrection. Please, Please rise, rise for the invocation, invocation by, by Father, Father Matt, Matt Malone. Malone. We gather here in this sacred place where the memory of all our fallen heroes propels our hearts toward the highest aspirations of the nation to proclaim to our fellow citizens and to the world Bobby Kennedy still lives in millions of hearts that seek a newer world, in millions of minds that dream things that never were and ask why not, in every ripple of hope. Yet we make this proclamation not only through mere human words or earthly gestures, but in this spirit of prayer, that privileged place in every soul where the grace of God transforms our wounded hearts into hearts of wounded healers, where sorrow is charged with meaning, where human weakness is redeemed and hope reborn. For above all, Bobby Kennedy still lives because the one in whose name we make this prayer, the one who was the source and summit of his life, the one who was crucified and yet rose triumphant, he still lives. Thus faith, hope, and love will never die. Amen.